when we think about an object moving in a circular path, its direction is continually changing. Now, at a certain instant, we have a velocity. And remember that velocity is what we call a vector. And a vector is a quantity which depends on direction. If the direction changes, then so does the vector. So this means that if the object is continuously changing its direction, then its velocity must be continually changing. And if the velocity is continually changing, this must mean that the object is accelerating, because acceleration is a change in velocity. So when an object is moving in a circle, its direction, and therefore its velocity, are continuously changing. However, the object's speed does not change. Why doesn't the speed change? Well, remember that we said that velocity is a vector, and that depends on the direction as well as the size. Well, speed, direction doesn't matter. It's just the size of the quantity that matters. So speed is what we call a scalar quantity. And a scalar quantity is that direction does not matter. And that's the answer to this question, is that speed is a scalar and direction does not matter for a scalar. So this means that the object has an acceleration. And we call this acceleration its centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. So I hope that makes sense. So just to summarize, the object moving in a circle is changing direction all the time. That must mean that its velocity is changing because velocity is a vector and vectors depend on the direction as well as the size of the quantity. If the velocity is changing, that must mean that the object is accelerating. And therefore, for an object moving in a circle, it must be continuously accelerating. And we call that the centripetal acceleration. Now, we're going to look in more detail at centripetal acceleration and how it comes about. But here's a, a question for you to ponder until the next flashcard. How do you make an object accelerate? What do you have to do to it? Just while we're on the theme of acceleration of objects moving in a circle, this is a research centrifuge the Air Force Research Laboratory uh, in Texas. And this thing will spin around pretty fast. And uh, it carries humans uh, or equipment to investigate the effects of this centripetal acceleration needed to keep this thing going in a circle. And this is useful for developing new types of equipment for dealing with high acceleration environments such as a, a fighter pilot or astronauts that will be subjected to high acceleration on blast off from the Earth's surface. This experimental centrifuge is also used to train fighter pilots uh, and to give them techniques for withstanding the huge g-forces, those that means acceleration, experience in fighter jets and in space rockets. And we've got a little video here uh, of uh, a fighter pilot that's undergoing training, uh, which gives you an idea of just how uncomfortable these high accelerations can be. Okay, so here we can see the fighter pilot that's in the uh, centrifuge. Uh, take a a look at the heart rate as this uh, clip rolls. Here we can see the G and this is the acceleration. 1 G is the acceleration due to the Earth's gravity. So you and I are sitting here or standing here and we're experiencing 1 G of acceleration. 
and that's about 10 meters per second squared. But watch that move and go higher and see uh, how uncomfortable this can actually get. Handbrake is activated, 9 G's, 15 seconds. Three, two, one, engage. Tighten up, big breath. Hold it, hold it, hold it. On top, breathe. Breathe. One, two, breathe. Legs, butt, stomach tight. Breathe. Squeeze the muscles nice and tight. Breathe. One, two, breathe. Legs, butt, stomach tight. Breathe. One, two, coming down, coming down. Stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. Pretty vicious stuff, but you can see that they were using a technique there to try and withstand those high g-forces. So we'll look at centripetal acceleration in more detail in the next flashcard.